All right, so we just finished a tutorial that involves making a bubble map um, the hard way, and this is a tutorial on how to make bubble maps the easy way. So if you weren't paying attention last time, a bubble map is a map where you have circles on a map, um, and a circle is, its size is related to the value that it represents. So we have LA right here, city in California, very, very large. Uh, we have a city called Eureka up here. Uh, there's very few people in Eureka, so it has a very small circle. San Francisco here, moderate amount of people, moderately sized circle. So in order to do this, we did all kinds of stuff. We used the ellipse tool over here. Um, we held down shift to make it a circle. We held down alt to make it come out of the center. We calculated how big the diameter of all of these circles would be using Excel. There was all kinds of intermediate steps. It was just, it was very complicated and prone to error. So now that you know the reason why all of those things had to happen, we're going to go back and we're going to remake this map in a very, very, very easy way. So let's get rid of all these circles. Let's get rid of uh, all this text because we won't need it. And just we'll take a peek real quick. Um, I still have a map underneath my SVG map that I will use to reference here is San Francisco, here's LA, here's San Diego, um, here's Fresno, all those cities that I don't actually know where they are. So one of the tools that uh, we've used a couple times is the pie graph tool. So if this is a column graph tool here for you, click and hold, go down to pie graph. Normally, A, no one's ever allowed to use pie graphs, but B, there's kind of an annoying thing that the pie graph tool does. Let's say we're going to make a graph of pet ownership in the U.S. versus Canada. So we have the U.S., we have Canada. Um, we're only going to do exotic animals, so maybe some llamas, maybe some uh, porcupines, maybe a alpaca, even though that's basically a llama. So in the U.S., let's say 1,000 people have llamas. Let's say, you know, 2,500 people have porcupines, and let's say 3,000 people have alpacas. Canada, though, uh, they're not as into all of these animals. Um, only 50 people have llamas, uh, 1,000 people have porcupines, and, you know, uh, 600 people have alpacas. We're going to hit apply here, and we're going to have two charts get made, the U.S. versus Canada. Normally, this is the point where I get very angry, because why is the U.S. pie bigger than the Canada pie? Well, it's because overall, there are more people who own these exotic animals in the U.S. than own these exotic animals in Canada. So Illustrator tries to do us a favor and makes the Canadian pie smaller. Generally, what I have you do is you close this window here, you right-click, you go to Type, and then you change your position, it was at ratio, and you change it to even. So there's going to be an even size for every single one of your graphs. But luckily, um, we can use this for our bubble charts to automatically size all of our bubbles, because the number of people, pet owners in the USA, is larger than the number of pet owners in Canada. And so when, if we go back, if we do undo, um, Look at our data again. It's because these numbers here are larger than these numbers here that USA is bigger than Canada. So let's take advantage of that. Let's get rid of all of this and go into Excel. All right, so now we're in Excel and we have our data here. We have our city and we have our population. And we're just going to cut and paste that into the data box here. We're going to hit apply, and hey, look at that. LA, San Diego, San Francisco, Fresno, Sacramento, Eureka. We can't really read it, but it's a small price to pay. So what has happened is Illustrator has taken all of these population numbers and done all that hard work for us of resizing each of these circles based on the area that they should be taking up. So life is good. Now all we need to do is um, 
maybe make this text a little bit more readable so we know which cities we're working with, move the cities to the places they belong, and then resize them to be, let's say, a nicer size. So the first thing we will do is we're going to go grab our white selection tool, and we're going to select all of the text. So you can either click and drag and grab all the text, or you can hold down Alt and then click twice, and it'll select all the text. Then we're just going to make the font size a little bit smaller um, so we can see which cities we're working with. If we try to do any of the stuff we're doing right now with the um, selection tool, the black arrow, um, or the black pointer, it'll just grab the entire graph at the same time, which will not allow us to do much of anything. So white selection tool, white selection tool, white selection tool. So now we're going to move each of these cities to the place that they belong. We're going to turn on our underlay map so we know where all of these cities are. First, we're going to take Los Angeles. We're going to move it down here. We're going to take San Diego. We're going to move it down there. San Francisco. Oh, look what's happening. So because this circle is kind of small, instead of grabbing the middle of the circle, what I ended up doing was just grabbing one edge of the circle and then pulling that down. So we're going to undo that. And for this one, I'm just going to try to grab in the black area. So the moving is successful. Grab in the black area again. Don't let any of those anchors show up, any of those white boxes. Avoid them like the plague. And Sacramento is our last one. Nope, one more, Eureka. Now, if you try to grab Eureka, it, you will always just get the edges. So what you can do is, is if you select all of it like that, ta-da, you move Eureka. So I'll do that one more time. If you have a circle that's very small, just click and drag with the white selection tool. Um, and now the whole thing will be selected, and you can click and drag it all the way over to where it belongs. Great, look at these wonderful, wonderful cities. All right, so now all we have to do is uh, get rid of these labels, get rid of this legend, and resize these bubbles to be the size that we want them to be. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. So we made a mistake in that we put our graph inside of our state layer. So I have another layer that's specifically for city bubbles. Um, I'll actually get rid of it, I'll create a new one. Um, Click down here, create new layer. I'm going to double click. I'm going to call it City Bubbles, and then I'm going to drag my graph into the City Bubbles layer. We have to do this now because once we make this stop being a graph, it's going to create all kinds of circles and text, and we won't have to. We don't want to have to deal with those. So, what we're going to do is first we want to delete all the things on the graph that we don't like. So, we don't need all these labels anymore going to delete the labels. We don't need this legend anymore, going to delete the legend. Oh, look at that, it's saying we can't remove it um, because it's still a graph. So what we're going to have to do is make this stop being a graph. So grab your black selection tool, click anything on here, anything on the, on the graph, and go to object, ungroup, you get a very scary warning. The warning will say if the graph is ungrouped, you won't be able to access its style, its data, or change its graph designs, and you say, I don't care. So yes, that sounds wonderful to me. And you can see that inside of City Bubbles, you now have a few different groups that contain all sorts of stuff. So these groups are actually going to cause us trouble in a little bit. Um, but first, let's see why they're going to cause us trouble, because you might run into this issue later. So first, we're going to take the white selection tool, and we're going to delete this population bit up here. And now we're going to attempt to resize all of these circles. So because they're in a group, um, you can just click them with the black selection tool. You could also use the white selection tool, hold down Alt, and then click one of them twice, and you'll get all of these selected. Normally, when we want to make things bigger, we use the scale tool. If we use the scale tool in this situation by double clicking and saying uniform 200%, we want them to be twice as big, uh, unfortunately all of our bubbles end up moving. And the reason why they end up moving 
um, is because the scale tool operates as if you were pulling on one of these edges here. And so not only does it make all of the bubbles bigger or smaller, um, it also pushes them farther apart or closer together, just like we were resizing the entire image. So that is not what we want to have happen. We want each of these individually to get bigger. What you would normally do, or what we will end up doing, is using something called transform each. So if you go to transform, transform each, we can change these numbers here, and it'll transform each one of these circles on its own. But if we preview it, it's doing the same thing as scale. And that's because we need to ungroup more and more and more. So once you have all of these selected, go to object, ungroup, object, ungroup, object, ungroup. Keep ungrouping until there is no other ungroup option there. So now none of these bubbles are connected to each other except for the fact that we have all of them selected. So now we're going to go Object, Transform, Transform Each. We're going to click Preview down here so we can see what we're doing. And then we're just going to adjust these numbers um, until there's something that we think is reasonably good. Um, maybe 320 looks pretty good. We want to make sure horizontal and vertical are the same, just so that these keep staying as circles instead of becoming ellipses. So we're going to hit OK. Um, we're going to have our nice bubbles. Um, we could make them transparent. We could make, if you click right here, um, this little circle over here on the right hand side of city bubbles, we can make the opacity for every single one of them all at the same time be 40% by selecting opacity up here. Or if we just select each of them, using this little select tool over here, um, we can change their individual opacity to be 40% so that when there is a little bit of overlap, you can see, oh, you know, San Diego is moving into uh, Los Angeles. So even though this tutorial took almost as long as the other tutorial because of the fact that all you need to do is cut and paste your data into the pie graph tool, it is a far easier way to make your bubble graphs. Good luck.